Kia ora, this is the Library Makerspace team. We're in the Makerspace making crochet teddy bears for graduation. Hopefully you've already picked up your graduation teddy bear kit and today we're going to show you how to make them. Let's start with the body of our graduation teddy bear. To begin, we'll make a magic circle. A magic circle is a way to begin crocheting in rounds by crocheting the first round into an adjustable loop. This is often used to start crocheted stuffed toys, amigurumi, because you can pull the loop tight so you won't have a hole in the middle of your first round where all the stuffing can spill out. Start with the tail end of the yarn in the palm of your hand and wrap the working yarn over your fingers crossing it over to make an X. Turn your hand over. Take your crochet hook under the first strand and over the back strand. Use your hook to catch the back strand and pull it underneath the first strand, then turn your hook so you're twisting it to create a loop. Chain one with the working yarn. What does this mean? Well, you create a chain stitch by taking the working yarn over the hook often described as yarn over, and pulling it through the loop on your hook, like this. Now you have created your magic circle. Following the graduation teddy pattern, we will now work six single crochet stitches into the magic circle. Insert your hook into the circle, making sure it's going under both the tail end of the yarn and the circle. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. That's one single crochet completed. Do this five more times for a total of six single crochets worked into the circle. If you look at the side of your work so far, you will see a row of little V shapes. Each V is one single crochet stitch, so you should be able to count six Vs. Now hold the last stitch you made and pull on the tail end of the yarn to close the circle fully. You have completed round one of the bear's body. Round two uses a technique called increasing. This is a way of adding more stitches to a round. The pattern tells us to increase by working two single crochet stitches into each single stitch from the previous round. First, insert your hook under the V of the first stitch here. The first one can be a little bit tight, so you might need to wiggle your hook. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. To increase, we will make one more stitch in the same place. But first, we'll place a stitch marker to mark that first stitch that we just made in this new round. This will make sure we don't lose our place in the pattern. Take the stitch marker from your kit and pop it through the V of the stitch just under the loop on your hook. Now continue with the second single crochet in this increase. Insert your hook under the same V as the previous stitch. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over one more time and draw it through both of the loops on your hook. Continue by putting two single crochet stitches into each stitch until you reach the stitch marker. Take a look at the row of V's. You should count 12 of them. The pattern tells us in round three to crochet one stitch and then to increase 
by putting two stitches into the next stitch. We will end it with 18 stitches in total in this round. Remove the stitch marker from the previous round. Insert your hook into the first stitch and work a single crochet. Remember to put your stitch marker back in now, as this is the first stitch of your new round. Now work two single crochets into the next stitch. Continue round three by working one single crochet, then two single crochets into the next stitch, until you reach the stitch marker again. Count the Vs, there should be 18. You now know all the techniques you need to reach round 9. Follow the pattern for round 4, which tells you to work 2 single crochets and then increase all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. In rounds 5 to 9, you will simply put 1 single crochet into every stitch. There will be 24 stitches in each round. Continue following the pattern and I'll meet you back at the end of round 9. OK, we've finished round 9. If you take a look, we can actually count the spiral rows from the very first round we made. In round 10, we will start decreasing the number of stitches. We do this by working one stitch over two stitches from the previous round. The pattern tells us to work two single crochets and then to decrease. So let's remove our stitch marker and work a single crochet into the first stitch. We place our stitch marker back in and then work a single crochet into the next stitch. That's two single crochets. Now we will decrease. Insert your hook into just the front loop of the next stitch which is only the front half of the V, and then insert your hook into the front loop of the following stitch. Yarn over and draw up a loop. Yarn over again and pull through all three loops on your hook. That's an invisible decrease, working one stitch into two stitches from the previous round, without it being noticeable in your final work. Continue round 10 by working two single crochets into the next two stitches and then decrease until you reach your stitch marker again. You should have 18 stitches in total in this round. In round 11 the pattern tells us to work one single crochet and then decrease for a total of 12 stitches. At the end of round 11 we've finished the body of our bear. To fasten off, first cut your working yarn. Make sure to leave a good length of yarn trailing off from the body, as we will use this later to sew all the parts together. Now chain one, yarn over and pull it through the loop on your hook. Continue pulling the yarn end all the way through and tighten it to secure the end. Now that you know how to make the body of the bear, you can use the same process to make all the other parts. The legs, the arms, the head, the muzzle, and even the ears. Follow the pattern to guide you. To make the hat, we'll start with a centre circle. This is simple. We make a magic circle again, and then work six single crochets into the circle, and fasten off. That's all.
The skull cap starts off a little differently. Instead of making a magic circle, we start with a chain. So first, wrap the tail end of your black yarn twice around your finger. Pull the back strand over the front strand, and then pull the back strand over the front strand and all the way off your finger. Remove your finger and insert your hook. You can pull the yarn now so the loop of yarn on your hook is snug but not too tight. Now work 23 chain stitches. Don't make them too tight. To make a circle, join one end of the chain to the other with a slip stitch. To do this, insert your hook into the end stitch in your chain. Yarn over and pull the yarn right through the loop on your hook. Work a single crochet into each chain in your circle. You should have 23 stitches in total. Continue with two more rounds working a single crochet into each stitch. You'll end up with a short tube. For the mortarboard, start in the same way as the skull cap. Work 12 chain stitches. At the end of your row, turn your work like the pages of a book. Then chain one. Insert your hook into the second stitch from the hook and work a single stitch into each stitch in the row. Follow the pattern to continue in this way up to row 11 and fasten off. The tassel refer to the pattern. Insert the safety eyes from your kit into the bear's head wherever it looks best to you. You can secure them with the plastic backing clip. Or if you prefer, you can make a different type of eye, perhaps using buttons. Squash the ears so that they're semicircles and then sew up the base so that they're ready to attach to the head. It's time for stuffing. You'll find a bag of stuffing in your kit and you can stuff all the body parts except for the ears and the muzzle. If you want more stuffing, you can always use leftover wool, fabric or just anything soft around the house. Now this is where those long yarn tails come in handy. It's time to assemble our bear. Take the darning needle from your kit and thread one of the yarn tails through it and then use that to sew the body part onto the bear. You'll be sewing the legs and arms and head onto the body and of course the muzzle and ears need to be sewed onto the head and finally the hat at the top of the head. The darning needle is also helpful when you want to add some finer details. For example, you're going to need a nose and maybe even a little mouth. Use the darning needle to sew these onto the muzzle with some of the leftover black wool. So we hope you enjoyed making your graduation beer. As with all projects like this, it's all about practice, experimentation and hopefully having fun. And if you're graduating this week, Congratulations, enjoy your moment. We loved having you at AUT and we wish you all the best for your future. Kakiti anō.